Well, the big one has arrived. Only six remain in this year's Star Sports and Toaster Race Course events and leisure Greyhound Derby. £175,000 is up for grabs on Saturday night at nine minutes past nine. And this is your go-to guide for the big one. And we'll pick out a, a bet or two on the supporting card as well. Um, joining me to run through the runners is Tony Bull on the Racing Post. How are you, Tony? I'm good, Dave. Really looking forward to the uh, Derby final. I mean, all Derby finals are good, but this is a great one. I mean, some, some of the cream has really risen to the top and all to play for. All to play for. Indeed. And what are your thoughts on, on what we've we've seen so far? The cream risen to the top for you? It has indeed. I mean, it's obviously suiting speed, the track. Um, it is a test in 500 metres, but the best place is clearly to be off the front, off that second bend. And there's a lot of speed in this particular final. And I think it's going to be whoever emerges off the second bend in front will go, probably go on to win, Dave. Well, let's now have a look at the six Derby finalists then taking to the track on Saturday night at Toaster over the 500 metres. On the inside, new in session for Graham Holland, a fifth Derby finalist in five years for Graham and his team at four to one, round about a four to one. These are a price guide. Dear Jet Sydney, the defending champion for Pat Buckley, again going in trap two, the same trap he won at Nottingham last year at nine to four chance. And uh, joining him at the head of the betting is Liam Dowling's Ballymac Fair one, one of two for Liam Downey's world famous Ballymac prefix, very exciting young greyhound Ballymac fair one. Kalara Lyon for Patrick Janssens, the outsider of the field. Ballymac Wild, um, arguably faring worst of the Railers in the draw for Liam Downey at 7 to 1. And the only seeded runner in the final, Patrick Janssens, Fawn Falcon, the maiden derby champion. We'll do, of course, try and get to the track on Saturday night. Get onto the Toaster website and book, but if you can't, well, from 6 p.m. on Saturday night, Sky Channel 437, free sat 250, and at sportystuff.tv. You'll be able to watch all the action live on Racing Post, Greyhound TV. Let's have a real close look then at each of the six finalists. First up is going to be new in session, Tony, who on Saturday night produced his best effort to date around Toaster. Yeah, I mean, if there was a court case about new in session's effectiveness around Toaster, Dave, I think the jury would still be deliberating until next year, but... One thing this dog has is class and you only need to bring your A game once. He's, he's scrambled through, um, I feel, in each round. But this was new in session, doing what he does in Ireland, getting off the front and proving devilishly hard to peg back. Kilara Lyon in pursuit, ran a blinder for Pat Janssens to qualify. Absolutely, that was a semi-final last week. And as I say, new in session's best effort today. And he goes again in trap one on Saturday night. Let's move on then to the defending champion, Dear Jet Sydney, who was unbeaten um, up until the semi-final. We're now going to have a look at his quarter-final win, and this was absolutely fantastic, 29-13. Yeah, he rode his luck in the first round. I mean, he got a charmed run in the very first round, but since then, he's been a professional, Dave. He, he clearly isn't going to relinquish this title without a battle, and when he gets off the front, I think he's impossible to pass because he keeps pulling and pulling. I think sometimes he might like them, hear them, in behind, but he's got a real engine, and if he gets off the front, he destroys rivals. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. The defending champion still going great guns in there. Next up, the ground that joins him at the head of the bet in Liam Dowling's Ballymac Fair One, um, who goes from track through is very impressive from four. Not a straightforward draw this on uh, Saturday night, Tony, but he cruised to the corner and drew away. Everything you look for in a ground, Dave, he, he just wants to get to the front and He's become a man during this um, derby. He was a bit of an unknown quantity heading into it, but Liam didn't bring him over without thinking he was good enough. And boy, is he good enough. I mean, I think there's more to come from the dog. I think he's got a perfect draw in the middle. And again, if he gets off the front, he'll keep pulling. Yeah, very exciting ground. Very lightly raced as well coming into this derby. Very much an unknown quantity, but improving all the time. Let's move on then to one of two what you class ultimate competition dogs in this year's derby. First up is Kalara Lyon in trap four. He's uh, been to numerous finals and won near enough them all. What a greyhound. Yeah, he's got the heart of a lion, Dave. I mean, last year he won the Kent um, derby at Central Park, Yarmouth derby. He won the Blue Ribbon, the competition at Toaster over course and distance earlier in the year. Admittedly, he hasn't really threatened in any of the heats, but... It just goes to show you, qualification's the name of the game, Dave, and we've seen big shocks in derbies before, and Kalara Lyon 
It would be a shock if he won, but it wouldn't because he has got a touch of class himself. Yeah, that was his, his best effort to date in this derby, really battling hard just to qualify. We'll move on then to Ballymac Wild, who has been a tremendous servant for Liam Downing. Here he is in, in trap one in the second round here, and he starts and he stays, and he's all class. Yeah, he's 37 kilos, Dave. He's a warrior of a dog. I mean, you look at his record in competitions, he thrives in competitions. He can overcome any trap draw. He just doesn't give up the chase. He, he sticks to the task from start to finish. He's got all-round pace. Ideally, he would have probably preferred to be drawn closer in, but a scrappy race plays into his hands. Yeah, absolutely. And the only seeded runner in the final is Patrick Janssen's Thorn Falcon, who is a wide seed on the outside of five railers. I mean, he's another ground. He starts and he stays. He's a big old lump. Um, but he rides the bump ever so well. He's done that a number of times in his races, and for a big dog, tremendously well balanced. And that high back end, if you watch Form Falcon when he races, his back end is a lot higher, and that acts as stabilisers. As you saw, he took that bump, but he's a dog that stays on his feet, and that 38 and a half kilo frame, Dave, saw him win the maiden derby unbeaten, and he's coped with what has been a step up in class during this derby. Yeah, and he was a dog, I mean, we'll, we'll chuck the, the graphic back up for... Um, the draw in itself, and we'll get selections um, a little bit later on. But he was a dog that was always going to have a good draw. A lot of the wides was going to have their draw, like your drum crow Brent's. So I think that's what saw him go deep, the drum crow Brent dog, like. And again, Form Falcon's got a great makeup here. Um, Say so Pat's put a bit of weight on him in the latter part of this derby. He was at his optimum in the maiden derby around 38 4, 38 3. So it be interesting to see what he tops the scales on Saturday. Well, yeah, indeed. And, and is this the final that we think if we find the leader, we're finding the winner? Well, Toaster in general has panned out that way. You, if you're in front at the sprint boxes, you, I'd say a high percentage of dogs have gone on to win. Um, it's not necessarily. It depends how the track's running. I, I think when the track was running a little bit slower, when they was doing around a 29, 30 to 50 mark max, the, the strong finishers did have a chance. But... Is there any real major strong finishes in this lineup, Dave? I mean, five's very strong. Yeah. I do think it's a race that's going to be won and lost in the early stages. Well, we're keeping very good company in the Racing Post Greyhound Derby final preview show this year because we are now joined by the champion trainer and a man who has two in this year's Derby final, Patrick Janssens. Patrick, how are you? How are the nerves holding up? Yeah, the nerves are very good. I'm very, very good. Yeah, no problem. Now let's get straight into it then, Patrick. You've got two in the final, and the first one being, uh, I think a phrase that's been coined quite often is, is Clara Lyon as a, the warrior. Louis the Lion, I know you, you call him. How is he? And what are your thoughts on the, the draw more than anything out in trap four? Um, he's very well on himself. The dog's absolutely bouncing. Um, the draw ain't ideal. I would love to see him sort of in three, really, three and four the other way around. But... You never know, you know. He has now and then them thing breaks and hopefully he can do one on Saturday. And I think the dog's improving sort of from the quarterfinals onwards and who knows, who knows why. And, I mean, you've said yourself, Patrick, you know, he might not necessarily be the fastest dog in your kennel. You've got some real superstars in there, but you wouldn't mind a kennel full of Kalara Lions, would you? No, you wouldn't. He's, he's an amazing round, you know. And, and, and if you look at the statistics, Statistics in, in finals. He's been in five finals, three group ones and three group and two group threes. They won all five. This is his sixth final, so we, we try to keep that record going. Yeah, he's just quietly gone about his business, qualifying, qualifying, qualifying. But you know, if this race was to get a little bit messy, Patrick, he's a dog that can grind it out, isn't he? He's a he's a real racer, and he's got that real willingness to win. He does. He does. He's he, he's he's the ideal derby dog, really. If I'm honest, you know, he's the one who don't have to lead. He'll still qualify. He can do it from the front. He can do it from behind. Hello, Patrick. Firstly, congratulations on reaching your first derby final. Got two runners in this year's event. Um, Form Falcon now, obviously, winner of the maiden derby. Um, how impressed have you been the way this dog's coped with a step up in class? Um, I think I think he's sort of gradually getting better and better. And I, I still think... Um, this dog has a massive run in him. I think he has enough early. If he leads, he's a massive runner. So I've always been a weight man, not necessarily my own um, weight, but I do look at weights of dogs, and I see you, you crept him up. He's around the 38, 8, 38, 9 kilo mark in his last two races. Are you going to trim him down, 
a bit for the final, or are you happy that he's carrying that bit of extra weight? No, he, he, he's going to come down. You know, he's going to come down because I thought when he run, was sort of running a 38, 4, 38, 5, he run better. You know, and um, no, he, we'll have him spot on Saturday. And, and, and one thing I must uh, say, with him running, he's got a very high back end. Like he's, 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 his back end is high, but that seems to help him stay on his feet if there's any hustle and bustle during a race. Yeah, he is. He's, he's, he's a big dog. He's a tall dog. But he's a very well balanced dog. Sometimes you have them big dogs, and they are sort of a bit gangly around the bend and a bit awkward, you know. But this one isn't. This one is is really well put together, and that's why I think when he has a bump, he can ride that bump, and he don't really lose no momentum. He keeps going. The uh, format now, the three runs in a week format, is, has been scrapped. How would your pair have coped with that type of format? Do they come out of their races? Good to go the next day, within a day or two, or would you be happy with a week gap? No, I, 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 it wouldn't have bothered me three, three runs in a week for these dogs because the thing is, um, them dogs I sort of in the derby, they all sort of more like five, seven, five dogs, really, than, than they're, they're four to eight dogs. They're not four to eight dogs at all. Now, if we look at the, the market, Patrick, um, I don't think the bookmakers are expecting you to be lifting that trophy, uh, rightly or wrongly, on Saturday night. Um, so this... Perhaps no pressure on there for you, but the, the weight of a nation is on your shoulders, Patrick. We're trying to fend off the Irish. Um, they've been winning our derby, um, and you're a, a Belgian trainer living in the UK, um, but you are our only hope. Yeah, yeah. I will do my best. I will do my best. And it's not only me. It's Cheryl, Luke, Rhea, Ron Mills. You know, we're all part of a team, and, um, you know, it's working very well. It's been working well for the last couple of years, and, um, yeah, we, we, we will have the dogs, both dogs on, on Saturday and we hope for a big run from it. Yeah, we will we'll whiz through your, your team as well because you've got um, quite a few runners on the car. But just a quick word on the enormity of, of the occasion for yourself personally. You are, you've recently been crowned champion trainer only last year. Um, so you've climbed that mountain. Now another one faces you and it's the biggest one of them all. It is. This is, this is the crown jewels really, isn't it? You know, the derby. So... But listen, we, we're so pleased. We had a great derby, really. You know, I entered eight dogs. We got um, two to the final. Um, they all done ever so well. Every dog we entered, you know. So, no, we, 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 we're enjoying the week. We're enjoying the moment. We're going to enjoy Saturday. And at the end of the day, you know, we're pretty relaxed about it and what will be, will be. Indeed. Let's have a look at the team then, because you've got a nice team on the van for Saturday night at Toaster. And uh, first up is going to be Jewel of Madonna, um, who goes in the 6.42 in the black jacket. Very, very lightly raced, but an exceptional trial a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, she's a very fast bit. It's a bit frustrating, really. You know, I would have thought she would have won more races by now. She does some fantastic trials in the qualifying trials. Took it to Romford, I thought, 5.75 would suit her. Um, she never really took to Romford as well as I thought, and we brought back the toaster and... Um, yeah, she's done a fantastic trial. It's a very hard race, this one. I mean, a dog of yours that's been in good form, albeit he got beat last time, but his two wins from his last three is Jack Solutions. He goes in the 717. What are your thoughts on his chances? Yeah, if you can clear the one dog to the bend, then Mr. Rue sort of hopefully will lead. You know, could hold four and five up, and then we can sort of sneak in a pitch and hopefully we can pick Mr. Rue up, you know. And, and now then, the belly, Patrick, Bocco's belly. He goes in the uh, the 754 in track one, arguably, you know, one of the most popular greyhounds in training at the moment, albeit, you know, the fact he's named after Gary Wiltshire. But aside from that, he's a very, very fast dog, and one that I know you're excited by. It didn't work out for him in the derby. Might we see him bounce back to winning ways on Saturday night? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I think track one is perfect for him, really, if I'm honest. Um... You know, the free dog, I hope John Mullins dog will lead and, and hopefully he can get in the pitch behind and, and sort of come from the third bend on and sort of wheel him in, you know. But he's a very exciting dog, especially when we're going to step him up in distance. Um, you know, he, he done the track record. I thought me personally was the fastest dog in the derby, but the fastest dogs don't always win. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a big price about Durando double. Um, your stay has stepped up in trip. Um, she's bumping into a couple of monsters in... Savannah Volcano and Iams around. Might we see her run a big race in that race? Yeah, she, she'll improve on that run, you know, but really, it's an achievement to get to, to the final, really, and finish in the first three, what she did on Saturday. On Saturday, really, was her final because she had a bomb out, get in front, and 
got to keep pulling away. And she's she, she done well, stayed on well to finish third. And uh, last but no means least, um, I'm not sure I would have liked to have been in your company when you heard the draw uh, for Bocco's John Joe. Again, away from that inside running around that he... He desires, he's very keen to, to be towards, but he goes 9.27. I mean, there's an argument, Patrick, that he's the fastest dog to the corner in the country. Can he cheat the draw? See, the, the trouble with John Joe is he's not really that ping breaker, is he? I never see him ping break yet. I hope he does it on Saturday. You know, um, that is the trouble with him. He, he, he sort of steps out level and then paces up, but he sort of goes sharp left as well. So it's a terrible draw, really. Um, I think he'll struggle, if I'm honest. But hopefully, for once, he'll do a thing. And if he does a thing, he will win. Now, I don't want to keep take too much of your time, Patrick. You know, Derby final week. I know you're very, very busy. Um, before you go, I've got to ask you who... You know, of course, you're going to have the 1-2 in the Derby final. We all know that. Um, but who's going to be your best chance of a winner on Saturday night? The belly. The belly. The belly. You, you seem very keen on the draw as well. I do. I do. I think he's good from track one. People think he has to be in three. I don't think he does. Yeah, most dogs break, break better from the middle, but if you're looking at a more more puppy derby, I thought he run from track one, he run perfect, he run a bend perfect, you know. So, no, I, I just hope he can follow him around and, and, and turn in the pitch and, and, and reel him in. That's, that's his game. He's not really the flashy dog who, who flashes out and leads, you know. If he does, you know, the better, but I, I think he turn in the pitch and, and could reel him all in. No, he's certainly very popular. I'm sure he'll be... Uh... Lots of people getting stuck into the belly on Saturday night. Well, best of luck to you, Patrick. Of course, wish you very, very well, not just your runners on the car, but in particular, those two in the Derby final. Thanks for your time and good luck in the final. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, before we get to the big one, the £175,000 Greyhound Derby final and uh, our views on the winner, let's have a look at the supporting card, RPG TV sponsoring uh, three competitions on the card. And the first one, well, being the biggest one, um, in terms of those supporting the final, that's the RPG TV Derby Plate. Uh, goes at 8.34 um, and a, a wide open contest uh, down the card. Fat Boy Storm 10 to 1. Swift Copes in the Blue Jacket of Trap 2 at 4 to 1. Angry Tornado will be the favourite uh, for Peter Cronin at 7 to 4. Bubbly Bollinger at 8 to 1. Shalom Milo in the Orange Jacket of Trap 5 at 9 to 2. And New in Jacko, the only seeded dog, the middle for Gemma Evans at 9-2 from Trap 6. Um, the VT we're going to have a look at, though, is the favourite and was the fastest of the semi-final winners. Um, in his heat, he showed good early. I thought in the semi-final, he showed a great attitude. Yeah, it didn't quite happen for him in the first round of the derby, Dave, but back-to-back -back wins has showed what might have been for Peter Cronin's um, charge. Again, I prefer him drawn just off the um, rails. I think he can trap a little bit more sprightly than on this occasion, but... This win shows that he's a real battler, Dave, and I, I, I do make him a worthy favourite because he, he stays the trip really well, and that's important at Toaster. Strange race, that one. You wouldn't have thought Nguyen Jacko would be getting beat once leading. No, very strange. I mean, he, he won the Olympic Nguyen Jacko um, for Ernie Gaskin, now in the hands of Gemma Evans. Um, has he potentially got a decent make-up in the stripes again? He probably has, but I still think that he needs to look lively because... The likes of Shello and Milo, he, he's not lacking to the turn. Um, a selection will be? I think three, Angry Tornado three. will take the beat in Two there. votes for the favourite there. Let's move on then. RPG TV Notebook Ladies, which uh, is at 7.35. And this is very, very open. One of the most competitive races on the 14 race card on Saturday night. Remember live on Racing Post, Greyhound TV. Uh, Kevin Boone's Betty's book on the inside around about a 7-2 chance. Uh, rag of the field, Arthur Pumpkin. In trap two at 33 to one. Ballymac in tent, who was a very gutsy in game last week at three to one. Uh, Droopy Zifa uh, for Gemma Evans in trap four at five to one. Then the uh, outside duo, Queen Dolly um, at 11 to four in trap five. And Luna Rocket, uh, the middle seed, also in trap six at 11 to four. And Luna Rocket, Rocket by name, Rocket by nature, a new sectional record at Toaster. What a performance this was. Under the bars, absolutely. Look, one of our hand slips start. Um quickly clear of the opposition and the thing is Dave it's not like she doesn't burn the candle at both ends of the park she was relentless if anything she extended away further than what she put in the early part of the race the question is she's in six in the final can she clear Queen Dolly well of a four dead split she can clear any dog in the country and yeah. I, I think Lee Fields I mean she's still far from the finished article Dave so I think she'll take the world to beat in Droopy Zifa's a credit connections won the Essex Vars Brighton Bell 
And Ballymac intense running well for Andrew Kibble, Swindon Raider. I think will improve for further sightings. Can easily find three or four lengths off of that 29.81. Sounds like you're going for the rocket. Yeah, I have to. I mean, obviously, we'll see if she can trap us quick from six. But she doesn't need to come away in that fashion because she's got it all. She was a little bit unlucky um, prior to that. She just got a back end clip when leading off the second bend. Uh, behind the Duala Prince um, dog. Yeah, it was in the derby itself. Mm. She was very, very unlucky. I like Queen Dolly there. Class act. I think uh, holding six to the corner is going to be absolutely crucial. Um, but we, we favour the two on the outside. They're a very, very competitive race. Could be three to one the field come the off there. Now, fascinating race um, is the RPGTV Watlin Street Sprint. Um, 270 metres. Uh, fastest dog arguably in the country lines up here. Uh, but there'll be plenty of people looking to take on Bocco's John Joe. Um, this is a race at 9.27 and, and down the card, skip along Sarge on the inside at 8-1. Northamptonshire Sprint finalist, uh, blast off Mason, who was so impressive last week at 6-1. Havana Class, the Laurels champion in the white jacket of Trap 3 for Liz and Rab McNair at 9-2. Uh, the aforementioned Bocco's John Joe in the black jacket of Trap 4 at 9-4. And then the wide duo of Sinat Mafia at 3-1 in 5. And Loggies Extra in trap six and as I mentioned blast off Mason very very impressive last week and damage was done in a matter of strides. Lived up to his name Dave blast off out the boxes quickly in control the fact that he's got proven form over four bends he was never going to come back to the opposition Bocco's John Joe ran well to qualify from a tricky draw and he's got another tricky draw to overcome to be true yeah the way I looked at this race I thought sign it Mafia and log his extra I'd play the five and six forecast because I can see plenty of crowding on the inside. Uh, Havana Class himself, the Laurels winner, will be edging across. And I thought Sign It Mafia ran an absolute blinder himself in, in the heat. He's a dog that you've always liked. He's hit and miss at the boxes, but again, he doesn't need to lead. If, they, if he can just trap with them, the time they inside crowding occurs, I think he can drive the bend and assert up the home straight. So Sign It Mafia for me. Yeah, and I mean, a quick word on, on Bocco's John Joe. Um, he's out in four. He's a dog that's desperate for the inside running row. And he'd probably be near enough even money, if not short, oh, if he was in one, wouldn't I'd he? Be, without a doubt, he'd probably be odd, odds on, Dave. I mean, it makes a huge difference. That's the thing. Give them all a solo trial, and Bocco's John Joe would probably post the fastest time. Not by a, a, a long way, but he would take the uh, world of beat in Golden Sprint, Northamptonshire Sprint, Victor. But trap one, he takes the paint off the rails, the dog. Yeah, he'll be heading for the inside out of trap four. And I'm going to be with... Sign at Mafia in Trap 5, as Tony mentioned, got a real soft spot for him, but very, very fast. And he can be a little bit hit and miss and erratic at the boxes, but when he's hit, he's very, very good. And he's got a good draw with Bocco's John Joe looking for the inside. Well, uh, we're giving you our selections on the RPG TV sponsored races, but what about the best bet on the card? Tony Bullen, open race correspondent for the Racing Post. Take the floor. I'll probably be worse to wear come 9.43, um, Dave, especially if the week pans out. I hope it does. But the Gain Greyhound Nutrition Challenge Cup final for me, Kishlon Shakira. I've been following this bitch from the get-go. And in her early races at Romford, she clearly wasn't suited to Romford and over a shorter distance. Bit clumsy track craft-wise as well. But since stepping up in distance, she's really flourished. And I was taken. I mean, she set the track record in the heats following night time. Danny uh, setting new figures for the uh, 712 metres. She's got it all. She, she's she got the early. She's just the bitch that's performing with real confidence and I, I think she'll take the world of beating. I was surprised to see 9-4, to 5-2 to two available. I made her a 6-4 to four shot. Quite late on in the night, that one. A few beers may have been taken by then. Well, the, so hips, will. the hips don't lie will be coming out, will it, if, uh, if Shakira can do the business? Well, yeah, there could be a few uh, Shakira songs coming out. But, um, yeah, I just think it's, again, I know it's over 7.12, but I'd like to see a little bit of a similar exit to what she did in the first round. But once in front, I'd be very disappointed if she was um, overhauled. And I think she's even capable of sitting in second or third if the right dog was in front. Uh, I know Deadly... The Largo's a, a, a dog that's done you a couple of turns, uh, Dave. Um, and the only thing is, he just flops out and I can't see him giving free a start and a beating. OK, well, uh, Kishlorn Shakira for Tony then. Uh, my selection's going to be in one of the uh, one-off races, actually. The 717 over 500 metres, Pat Buckley's Coombe Leo. Blessed with massive, massive early speed. I'm expecting the track's going to be quick on Saturday night. I know rain is forecast, so do bear that in mind with your bets. But... 
I'm expecting a fast track and I want to be off the front in most of these races and Kumleo will be off the front in the 717. I think he can make all of the running. Now then, let's bring uh, back in the big one, the 909, the Star Sports and TRC Health and Leisure Greyhound Derby final, £175,000 up for grabs. There are the finalists. Um, our, our market guide suggests, you know, nine or four joint favourites, Digit Sydney and Ballymac Fair one. Tony Bullen, who is going to be winning this year's Greyhound Derby final? I think Ballymac Fair one. He, he, he looks a fair one. I mean, he's progressed with each round. He, he's just shown the right attitude, Dave. I think he'll come away nicely from this slot. Don't get me wrong, if Dear Jet Sydney pings the lids and secures those rails, he's going to be very, very difficult to overhaul the defending champion. But I just want to see a nice, clean race. All the dogs come away level and, and see who is the best on, on the night. Hopefully we see uh, no shenanigans at the start. Disappointing last year at Nottingham when a uh, bit dilly-dallying behind the boxes. I don't think we'll see that Saturday. Made the best dog win. And right new in session off at your peril. He might have timed it right. He's sort of um, eagled, eagled the 18th last week. Who's to say he's not going to follow up? But it's a fascinating race as all derby finals are. Yeah, absolutely. And that's two votes for uh, Trap 3 here because I'm going to be with Ballymac Fair 1 as well. I've, just, I've got a feeling one and two are going to come together there and, and it might just open up real nice down the middle for Ballymac Fair 1. And... Liam Dowling's been knocking on the door for the English Greyhound Derby, and I think it might just open this year. We've got all sorts coming up in the Racing Post um, leading up to the Derby. And of course, remember, you can sign up to the Racing Post Greyhound Derby dossier email. We've been amongst the winners throughout this year's Derby, and uh, the final instalment will be sent out on Saturday ahead of the final card as well. Lots of insight and expert analysis in that, so do make sure... You sign up, Racing Post uh, email you can see up there, uh, Derby email to sign up. Um, and as we've already mentioned, you know, do try and get to the track. If you can't, we've had every race of every round live on Racing Post Greyhound TV this year. And uh, Saturday will be no different. Sky Channel 437, FreeSat 250 and on the stream it's at sportystuff.tv. Well, that about wraps it up, Tony. Um, it's going to be a fascinating final on a fascinating card. Yeah, it's a, it's a great card. I mean, uh, early -ish start and, as I say, take pace yourself like the dogs. Just, like, come, come the latter stages and bet responsibly because it can get out of hand sometimes. But it's just great racing, Dave. Even if you've not had a bet, it's just brilliant entertainment and just want to see nice, clean racing and, and, and some good times, good performances. You're going to, you, you're going to see shocks. It's frills and spills, this sport, and hopefully Saturday there'll be plenty of them. Absolutely. And wise words from Tony. They do please remember to gamble responsibly. I'd like to thank Tony for his time and expertise. Thank you guys for watching. And the final message of course, good luck to all six connections involved in Saturday night's big final. <laughs>